Um, anyway, so tonight uh, what I want to speak about, one of the main things that we as the body of Christ really have to know and understand is about the blood of Jesus Christ, right? And, and the, you know, one thing that the enemy hates in all the years that I've been doing deliverance is the blood. When you mention the blood, usually it's like, shut up, I don't want to hear it. You know, they hate the power of the blood and anything that has to do with the blood of Jesus Christ. And, you know, Christianity, and I hate to say it this way, but it's true, it's a bloody gospel. Jesus was brutally beaten for us. And uh, we're entering, we're in Nissan, we're entering into Passover season. And, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie the two together because we were always supposed to celebrate the feast. The, the Christian church was never not to supposed to, not to supposed, uh, supposed to celebrate the feast. We always were, but the Nicene Council took it out because there's power in understanding the feast of the Lord. Because there's three feasts that he says that we are to celebrate. And it's um, Tabernacles, you know, in, in the fall feast. The Passover and Pentecost. Those are the three that he said they're feasts of the Lord. And he didn't say they were Jewish feasts. He said they're feasts of the Lord. And so Passover is what we're doing. We're passing over, right? That's when, when the Lord brought deliverance to the Israelites. He passed them over. He got them out of a place of slavery and bondage and brought them into a place of victory. Amen? So in Revelations 12, 11 and uh, 12 in the Amplified, I think you have the handout up there, right? Um, it says here, and they overcame. Who's the they? Us. They overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony and our confessions, not just our testimony. For they did not love their lives and renounce their faith, faith even when faced with death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them in the presence of God. And woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you in a great wrath, knowing that he only has a short time remaining. And that's the truth. And, and our sin, sin is the only thing that the enemy has to accuse us. It, it causes an open door, all right? So that where, there, where there's rebellion, where there's disobedience, where there's unbelief on our part, the, the, door gets, the enemy gets a foothold into our lives. And so that's why we can repent, right? In 1 John uh, 1, 9, I think it says he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? So as we, you know, when we mess up, get before the Lord and repent. And, and close the door. But again, God's not mocked. He knows if you have a sincere heart, right? But, you know, God's on our side, right? He wants to really work with us. So um, uh, Derek Prince, he has a lot of good stuff on the blood of Jesus, right? And then uh, a whole bunch of other ones, and I'll quote some of them tonight. But Derek Prince calls the blood an atomic weapon. See, when we really get an understanding of the power of the blood of Jesus, you sent a bloodline around your life. You sent a bloodline around your family, around your workplace. It's powerful when you get that understanding of it. And I'm sure many of you have that. But I said, Lord, you know, show me. Bring me into that deeper place of understanding, you know, because we all know in part. We don't know it all. And so he keeps drawing us into a deeper understanding of, of, of really um, – encounters with him so the blood of jesus is is a primary weapon and i don't have this up there but on first in first corinthians seven twenty three, it says he we have been redeemed at a tremendous cost right when you study anything about the crucifixion oh my gosh and like how many of you have ever seen the passion of the christ all right most of us saw that and, and the depiction of what they did was pretty accurate, but, but it, the, the scriptures actually says that we couldn't even, he was his visage, visage how do you say that? This visage was so marred that we couldn't even identify him. He was willing to be brutally beaten and, 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 and all his blood, you know, shed for us so that we don't have to live in defeat. We, yes, we have affliction. Yes, stuff goes on. But because of what he did for us, we have life and life eternal, not just in heaven, but here on earth. And we learn how to war through that. And so, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. Now, on Sunday, we have um, Christine Bowles coming, and she's going to get more into the Hebraic understanding of Passover. And uh, she's awesome, so I, I know you'll really be blessed. Anyway, so... Um, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, for most of us, we all say we plead the blood of Jesus, right? That's not a begging term. We're not begging Jesus. It's really a legal term, and it's a plea in action of law. 
it's a command. We are pleading, we are commanding, we are decreeing the word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ over our lives because of what he did. There's life in the blood, and he shed his, his blood for us so that we can be free. And, and any time in deliverance that we have prayed for people and, and, and a demonic force is manifesting, let me tell you something. <laughs> they don't want to hear the blood of Jesus. They don't want to hear anything about the blood of Jesus. One time, um, I, my son was, and I've shared this before, he, he was around 18 months old in the car. And I had him in the car, and I was taking somebody to my husband's uncle for deliverance. And um, I had a song on that had to do with the blood of Jesus. And this person was acting kind of crazy in the car, and it was getting me nervous. And I thought, oh, my gosh, and I'm driving. I have my son in the back seat, and I kept thinking in my mind, he's going to put his hand down, and he's going to choke me. <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. So I'm like, and so I looked at him, and I said, in the name of Jesus, because he started saying crazy gibberish things, and I said, I forbid you to speak right now, and you be still. And he looked at me, and the whole ride, he just went, he couldn't talk. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know. You know, you pray these things, and sometimes you don't really realize that, that, that it works, you know. So, you know, I thought, oh, my gosh, until we got to the place and he was able to talk again. But in the whole time in the car ride, he couldn't talk. So there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. So, you know, we have to honor the blood, honor what he did for us. And that's why when we're going through hard times, when we're experiencing depression or sadness or sorrow, know that you can go before the throne room of grace boldly because of the blood, and you can have him sprinkle. That's why that word was so important, Cherie. He, there's a sprinkling of his blood. It's always ever, it's always going. It's, always, it's alive. It's there for us to cleanse us and purify us and set us free. And so the, there's the, the blood of Jesus really is the heartbeat of the gospel. The, the thing that distinguishes us, as you all know, from other gospels is the resurrection. Well, first of all, the crucifixion, but he rose from the dead. It's the cross. Amen. And so, um, you know, and the Bible calls his blood the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And, and, and so, we're, you know, the, you know our, the price was paid in full. What he did for us was we were redeemed. In Galatians it said we were redeemed from the curse of the law. We were, we were, when you study that word redeemed out, we were, what they did in those days, they, when the slaves, they would put them on this, this block and they'd have to stand there. A lot of times they were, you know, naked and, you know, they would whip them. They would look at their mouths to see what their, how, how their teeth was. They would beat them to see how they can tolerate a beating if they were strong enough. I mean, it was brutal. Right? Any kind of slavery, anything like that is terrible. And Jesus, in the word redeeming, it says, I bought you back. I bought you out of that mess. And see, where the enemy had, has an open door to harass and torment us, the Lord says, uh-uh. The blood covers you. Now it's up to you to know your authority and shut that door and, and place a boundary line of the blood of Jesus around you and your household. So we know the story in Exodus 12, 13. I think that's the next one. I gave you, yeah, there we go. It says, but the blood on your doorpost will serve as a sign marking the houses where you're staying. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Now, we know the story, you know, how Moses went to Pharaoh ten different times. And, um, and when, when it was time for them to cross over, the Lord says, uh, you know, put the, you know, the blood from the lamb on your doorpost, and when that death angel comes, when they see the blood, it will not harm you, right? And that's no different than us. We have the blood on the doorposts of our heart Amen. as a born-again Christian. But we have to activate that and know that it's for each and every one of us. And God has us covered, and he has us protected. And, and know that by the blood of Jesus, you know, we are made free and we are protected. Um, I was reading a story, and I, and I, I was reading it in um, Maxwell's book. Um, I'm going to quote him. Uh, I forget his first name, but John, no, no, it's not him. H.A. Uh, Maxwell, I think. He wrote The Power of the Blood, and, or Maxwell White, that's his name. Anyway, he was talking about this guy, Don Gossett, Gossett and he was a minister. And um, the guy has a friend. This guy, Don, had a friend from Tennessee, and... Um, he was ministering in Canada, 
and he has all these little kids back home, and the devil was tormenting him and saying that there, there are wolves in your area because they lived out in, in, like, no man's land, you know, in the farming area someplace. And he said these, these um, uh, wolves have rabies, and your kids are going to get taken out by them. And here he is, you know, he's the man in the house. He's not there, and he's freaking out. He's getting really worried over his family. And uh, he prayed with this Pastor Don, and they prayed, and they, they took authority over the, the lies of the enemy and released the bloodline around their property and forbade the enemy, you know, from the, the foxes from coming near. And um, literally the next morning they got the call that there were four or five dead foxes around the bloodline, around where they pray of the bloodline of their property. See, there's power in the blood. And, and you know, we pray and, and we believe it's not, and listen, this isn't like a rabbit's foot. It's not like this little magic potion thing here. It's, it's a belief system. It's in faith of what Jesus Christ did for us because when he died on the cross, as you know, he healed us. I mean, there's salvation means, soteria means healing, deliverance, prosperity, preservation, safety, right? So we can access that and apply the blood over where we're at and, and you know, that the blood covers us and the, the blood sanctifies us, etc. And so there, there are so many testimonies that uh, of, um, you know, where we have, uh, you know, prayed and, and applied the blood. When we're doing deliverance, we always pray the blood of Jesus. We've had demons threaten us that they're going to kill us. We plead the blood of Jesus, and they back down. And so we have the blood on the doorposts of our heart. And that uh, there's another scripture, and I didn't put it on there. Each time I sent something to my husband, I thought of another scripture. In Revelations 5, 9, and 10, it says, You're worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God, but by your blood uh, uh, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. See, by his blood... That's what he did. He's redeemed us, and we will reign here on the earth. So the blood of the lamb, you know, is powerful, right? And so when he sent them out, when they, they crossed over in Psalm 105, 37, it says, He brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them. See, you know, it's, it's stepping into that supernatural. And I do believe that, you know, for a while there the church has been on pause, but I believe the church is waking up. And I believe that the church is waking up and knowing that who we are in Christ, knowing our authority, and that we're not passive and we're not carnal. Because I, I don't know how many of you are saved a long time, but we saw so many more miracles, and more so in the past than, than what we're really seeing now. But the Lord says there's a, there's a shift. There's a shift, but he's activating it in us, and we all need to step out. We all need to, you know... Um, you know, do what the, uh, obey what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, but God is awakening us, and he's saying, listen, don't tolerate, don't keep looking at what has been. You know, a lot of times you pray and pray and pray, and it's not like we're not seeing miracles, because we are, but I saw it all the time, wherever I was at. And I thought, what's going on here, Lord? And so there's, there's a reset that's happened. And so God is calling us all, and he's saying, look, all the past, all the stuff that's happened, all the hurt, all the disappointment, all the betrayal, we have to cut our losses. And God bring, you know, and he'll use all of that for a testimony, I promise you. But allow him to heal your heart and, and purify us. That's what the blood does. It, it, it cleanses us. It, 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 there's a sprinkling that takes place. But allow him to bring that healing because we are moving on. We are in a transition period. And just like they crossed over in Passover, so are we. And, uh, you know, and Lord knows that the, the people of this world need to know the church who know their God shall do great exploits. I, someone just sent me information about what they're trying to implement in the school system. And here in New Jersey, uh, it's, it's like porn, porn for these little kids. So I'm like, you know what, we, the church has to rise up. We cannot, we cannot tolerate this, allow this. We cannot, whether you have children or not, we all have to, we all have to get in their faces and do something about this. This is ridiculous. And so, but see, there's power in our prayer. There's power in the word. There's power in the blood of Jesus that we can release this and see transformation and change. Amen? So, um, Passover means to pass over, and in a sense, it also meant protection, all right? And so, as I said, the, the Lord sees, and the enemy sees the blood. 
on us. And there was years ago, the Lord gave me a vision. And you know, uh, down the shore, what's that, that game called when you're, you keep hitting the whack-a-mole? Whack-a-mole. <laughs> Well, that's what he showed me. So I saw this beautiful crimson river of blood, and I saw this movement. And then any time a head popped up in unbelief or a murmur or a complaint, it was when the devil was like, ah, oh, there they are, boom, was able to whack them over the head. See, we are covered and protected by the blood until we come out of that umbrella of protection, until we start murmuring, until we start complaining, until we get into sin and we start judging, and we're in fear. Boom, we come up out of that beautiful crimson covering of his blood, and it's like that whack-a-mole thing. Boom, and, and you get whacked, and the enemy identifies us. He can't identify us because we're covered by the blood, and it's when we come out of that umbrella and when we're in sin or we're in unbelief, that's when he can identify us. That's why he whispers to us and lies to us all the time and tries to get us to believe his lies, you see, so that we come out of that covering. But right now, he sees the blood. He sees the light of Jesus over us. And that's the beauty of the protection that we have. And that's why he works overtime because remember, he's been, you know, I've heard it say, Sister Celeste, uh, this lady who mentored us, and, and uh, she used to say he was uh, declawed, and, and he, he, all his teeth were removed, so the only thing he can do is gum you to death. So, but, but what does he do? He's good at lying. Because what does the Bible say? He's the father of lies. So he lies and lies and lies. But if we keep listening to him and not rebuke it and not take authority over the word, I mean over the lies and use the word and the power of the blood, that's how he gets us. Because he is under our feet. And so in Leviticus 16, 14, it says, He shall take some of the bull, uh, look, he shall take some of the bull's blood and sprinkle it with his finger on, east, on, on the east side of the mercy seat. And also in front of the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. See, that's why that word that Shereen had was important, the sprinkling, all right? So the high priest would sprinkle the blood seven times when making atonement for the people. This is Old Testament, all right? And it was a foreshadow of what was to come. And so atonement means reconciliation or restoration. So he's, he's, he's making atonement. And that's what the blood does for us, makes atonement. It restores us, all right? And so in Scripture, well, let me just say this. The blood sacrifice at the time would remove the barrier that sin had erected between God and man. So, so we can come, now in Hebrews it says we can go boldly to the throne room of grace because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we find in scripture that the Bible mentions seven different ways that um, Jesus spilt his blood. And I think I have it up there. You can go to the next um, uh, slide. Yeah. So he sweated drops of blood. He bled from the beatings on his face. And, and remember, I mean, they, they pulled his beard out. They, 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 he, they, they had the cat of nine tails that ripped, literally tore his back apart. All right, he bled from having his beard ripped out. He bled from brutal scourging. He bled from the crown of thorns onto his head. He bled from the nails driven through his hands and feet. And he bled from a Roman spear piercing his side. So, and, and so it, 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 it you know, um, paralleled what they did there. In, in the Old Testament, there were seven, the, 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 the priest would sprinkle seven times. Well, this, he bled seven times for us out of seven parts of his body. So the blood has the ability, it speaks on our behalf. And here's the thing, I mean, this is not something that we intellectually get. It's something by the Spirit, and Holy Spirit, show me. His blood is interceding on our behalf. All right, and so in Hebrews 12, 24, in a voice it says, you have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant between God and humanity into his sprinkled blood, which speaks a greater word than the blood of Abel crying out from the earth. In Genesis 4, 10, the voice of Abel cried out to God, exposing Cain's sin of murder. Remember, his brother killed him, and his blood was crying out. Well, Jesus' blood is crying out and speaks on our behalf. That's powerful. It's just so powerful. We're not defeated. We have to remember that even though we go through hardships and the, you know, trials, the Lord's saying, listen, my blood is speaking on your behalf, and you are a victor. You are more than a conqueror. And to not look at life through a, through a lens of defeat and depression and 
and hopelessness and despair. No, we have that atomic weapon of the blood, the power of God, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We're not trying to get it. We have it. And so um, the Passover lamb, let me just explain a little bit about this blood key. The Passover lamb had to be perfect, and it had to be without spot or blemish, right? And so at 9 a.m., I think, I, I think it's the next slide, 9 a.m., on the 14th day of Nisan, that would be like next week. You can go to the next slide. The Passover lamb was bound to the altar in the temple and put on display like Jesus. And, um, and then at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m., the high priest would cut the throat, and it was so gross, of the Passover lamb declaring, it is finished. Well, at the same moment, Jesus, our Passover lamb, cried from the cross, it is finished, at 3 o'clock. The same thing was happening, you know, and, and Jesus was that Passover lamb. He had, there was no sin in him. In 1 Corinthians 5, 7, it says that Jesus, read it in the New Testament, is our Passover lamb. All right? And so it, this month represents, it's a month of redemption and it's a month of miracles. In Leviticus 17, um, 11, in the message, it says, I have provided the blood for you to make atonement for your lives on the altar. It is the blood, the life that makes atonement. It's there, that blood is there. It's a heavenly bloodline. It's there to redeem us. So when the enemy, you know, we do a lot of counseling. And when the enemy tries to keep rehearsing your past, Keep rehearsing what's gone on and, and or and then saying, because of your past, you're never going to move forward because this is what's going to keep happening to you. That is a lie. And that's where it's like, I release the blood of Jesus against you. I remember uh, my friend, uh, it was Cheryl Price, said that her son was running out when he was a little boy. Uh, he was in the parking lot, and he ran out into the parking lot, and she screamed, and all she said was, the blood of Jesus. And, and the car, you know, just stopped and, you know, the, the kid didn't get hit by a car. I don't know. It's probably uh, Jonathan, if I know him. But, um, you know, he was uh, protected, but there's, there's such power in the blood. And, um, you know, there's just so many testimonies that I can share about the blood and, and how his blood and his mercy not only protects us, but it saves us. It heals us. And uh, in Hebrews, um, and it cries out. The blood speaks in our behalf, and it cries out mercy. How many of us need mercy? It's like, Lord, have mercy on my soul, right? Hebrews 9, 12, and 14 says, With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once and for all and secured our redemption forever. All right? And under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes, ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. But just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our, conscious, our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. See? And for by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sin. I mean, listen... We have, we have this access, and a lot of times we don't take it because we think we're not good enough or, or how are we going to hear God. The Lord's saying, listen, I, was brut I willingly died on the cross for your freedom, for your deliverance. Do so you have access to me to worship me, to get revelation from me, to have restoration and healing, to give strategy for your family? He's saying, take advantage of this. You don't have to live in defeat. And listen, we've all been through hell and back here. Listen, we've all have testimony to share. But through it all, we've learned to trust in Jesus. Amen? And we learn and we have testimony and we get stronger through all this, right? And that God has, has never leaves us. And, and so where there, there is anger in your heart, where there are, for those online, you're disappointed. That you think, you know, I, I was just talking with someone about their husband being disappointed. In, in God. But, you know, we've all been there. I've been there. And I, you know, I know some people would say, oh, I've never been disappointed. Well, I've been disappointed. And I just said, Lord, you know, I don't understand you. And we're never going to understand everything. But I still rather choose to trust you. Because what's the alternative? The devil? Are you kidding me? And so I rather trust you. And he's the only one that can take your broken heart and heal it. He's the only one that can turn your situation around, heal your heart. Right? So many of us have had our hearts broken, but didn't God bring restoration and healing to it? Amen? And that's the beauty of our God. 
And so as we celebrate Passover coming up, we're declaring our faith in him in the power of the blood. We are saying thank you for your blood. There have been churches in the past and, and still, I guess now, that took songs out that had anything to do with the blood of Jesus. I mean, that's outrageous. That's our gospel. Jesus, he, he died. He shed his blood. He was pure and without blemish. He shed his blood willingly. He was a willing sacrifice that came from heaven to live as a man on earth on our behalf. That's how much he loves us. I said, Lord, I know that you're, you're an amazing God because who would be willing to die on behalf of someone, right? I mean, so Maxwell White, that was the name of the guy. So this is, this is what he wrote in his book. It's called The Power of the Blood. And, uh, and he wrote here, the Holy Spirit showed me that the blood of Jesus Christ represents his life. When Jesus Christ shed his blood at Calvary, he gave us his very life. And when we ask the Lord to wash us and cover us with his blood, we will experience his life-giving power. So when we apply the blood of Jesus through prayer and faith, it is the Lord who covers us, and blood symbolizes life. So when we are applying or pleading the blood of Jesus, we're not begging God, as I said before. Rather, it's a spiritual dynamic um, application. All right, and the power of the blood releases deliver deliverances and neutralizes the power of hell. I know, like around my house and and um, you know around our cars, and I lose the blood over our kids. And you know, I always apply the boundary. I've had communion. Just go around the perimeter of my property and have communion. We do that when we go prayer walking on on properties. We pray. We put communion in the ground. We're <laughs> losing the blood, you know, because we believe it. It's by faith. It's by faith. So Jesus shed his blood to give us victory over the enemy. What is what The scripture I started out with in Revelation, we overcome how? By the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. Amen. That's how we overcome. What's your testimony? What's your confession? And see, our confession too is, it's not just that, oh, I have to stand up and give a testimony. That's one aspect of it. But it's decreeing the word of God over your life. I was reading a testimony, and I was telling Leah about this um, and I, I don't remember the man's name, but he's a pastor out in San Diego. He felt he was very healthy, you know, was a runner, et cetera. And he went to the doctor because he was feeling really tired, and he had stage 4 cancer. And needless to say, he was shocked. And, um, you know, you can imagine what goes through your head when you get that kind of a diagnosis, right? And he said, Lord, either I believe you or I don't. And so he started to apply the blood and meditate upon the word. And, you know, in, in, in what he did, he said he had 175 scriptures that he quoted over himself every single day. Amen. They, they said to him, you will not live. You know how doctors can be. I mean, listen, God bless the doctors, but, you know, they, they, no bedside manner sometimes. They said, you will not live. And this is it. You're going to die. And he said, you know what? <clears throat> if it's my time, it's my time, but I'm going, to, I'm going to really pray. And it was a battle. You know, he did go through chemo. He did go through situations. Then he also went more of a natural route as well. But in the meantime, he said, the word of God, the hundred and he said, that's what the Lord told him to do. All right? 175 scriptures, he said, he read them daily. Now, he said it was a process, and he said there were times that his mind would get bombarded with fear and anxiety, right? Because we're human, my gosh. And so, but he would apply the blood, and he would decree the word, and, and he is cancer-free. He is cancer-free. And, you know, he said it, you know, listen, I, I did what they were saying. I went to, the, I, you know, but I was praying, and I was decreeing. And he said I wouldn't even sit in a doctor's office. He said, because I wasn't identifying with sick, sick people. He said, I would go to the doctor for my appointment. He said, but I had to stand outside. I just couldn't sit in there with them. Not because I thought I was better. I said, I was not going to identify as a cancer patient. And so I thought, man, listen to this guy. So, you know, but the power of the word. But it's warfare. There's warfare involved in this stuff. Right? And that's why we need each other to rally around each other and to pray one with another. Because when you're going through it, we're going through it with you. And, and we believe that God is a God who answers our prayers. And so, um, you know, I, I just was really touched by his testimony. And um, I just think that the more testimonies we hear, 
you know, the more we're encouraged, right, by what God's doing in our lives. And I know that so many of us here, again, can come up here and, and give testimony over, over victory, over the power of the blood of Jesus. Um, one time I was in, deliver, in a deliverance session, and the person was getting a little riled up and, and was really getting to my, you know, like close proximity to my face because he was threatening me. And I just looked at him like, and, and I just saw the blood of Jesus. And, and the person came real close, and he went like this and stopped and just pulled back. Because the power in the blood, I had no power in it. It's the blood of Jesus. The person was trying to intimidate me and get, like, really, you know, nasty in my face. And I thought, you can do all you want, but you're coming out of him. And so, you know, there's power in the blood. So in, for, in Ephesians 1, 7, it says here that, and I like it in the Amplified, it says, in him we have redemption. Um, that is our deliverance and salvation through his blood, which paid the penalty for our sin and resulted in the forgiveness and complete pardon of our sin in accordance with the riches of his grace. In Hebrews 10, 19, therefore, believers, since we have confidence, I love this, in full freedom to enter into the holy place where God dwells by means of the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, another scripture, in 1 John 1, 7, it says, but... But if we really walk in the light, that is, live each and every day in conformity with the precepts of God, as he himself is the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another, for he is with us and we with him. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin by erasing the stain of sin, keeping us cleansed from sin in all its form and its manifestation. I was reading another wonderful book um, by Mahesh Chavda, and he wrote a fabulous book on the blood of Jesus. And, you know, he was a Hindu, and he speaks about how he was raised up in Africa and how, you know, his encounter that he had with Jesus. He started now doing crusades out in Africa and in India and in these countries um, preaching the gospel. And uh, in Africa, this particular place where he was at, there was just so much witchcraft. Witch doctors were coming, threatening his life. And the Lord said... He, and the Lord said to him, let me tell you, Mahesh, he said, one drop of my blood will destroy all these witches here. Now, again, remember, it's a spirit. The Lord loves the witches. He hates the spirits, the demons, right? And, and he said that word that God gave him just blew him out, and it just so encouraged him. And when he came out, he, he released that. He said, one drop drop of the blood and he said people hit the deck and start writhing like snakes and he said um that so many of them got delivered and set free he was just saying just one drop of the blood of jesus will set you free you see but it's revelation of our authority and knowing the power that we all have and understanding that we have living uh, he, it's alive. The blood is alive in us. Remember John G. Lake, if you ever read a testimony about him, when they had the bubonic plague put on his hand, what happened? The plague died. Why? The life of the blood of Jesus Christ is in him. That's the same with us. That's why we, we don't shrink back and pull back. That's why we press forward and say, wait a minute. If he did it for John G. Lake, why not us? What about Smith Wigglesworth? What about all, you know, Maria Woodward Edder? All these people that operated in such tremendous power. That's where the Lord's bringing us back to now. This is the church that he's saying. This is a church of, of not just this church, church. I'm talking about the church at large of miracles, signs, and wonders of the supernatural, understanding the power of the blood that we will turn the world upside down like they did in Acts. That's what God is calling us to. He's saying you're going to break out of your passivity and carnality. He said because that was then, not now. We're stepping into the new, this Passover season. We're crossing over with the vitality and the life of Christ Jesus, unlike anything we've experienced. And he said it's for whoever wants it. And I choose to go with it. I choose to go with it. I choose to go with the supernatural. I want to see what I, I've seen. Listen, God, that, what I saw isn't anything in comparison to what we're going to experience. And it's happening. I mean, you know, we, we have testimonies. I mean, I know that we're, we're seeing it. But, you know, I was telling uh, the other night, um, you know, I was worshiping. I was just praying. And I just saw the church falling on its face with the glory of God, the power of God there, and, and people coming up with vision and revelation from God for what's ahead, for what the world needs. Listen, they're going to perversion. They're going to all this crazy stuff because they don't have a hope in anything. 
But we're the answer. It's not to put them down or condemn them. Jesus loves them. But we're the light. And he wants us to be that light to speak into them. Yes, I'm aggravated when I see what they're trying to implement. We're not going to tolerate that. But the Lord wants these people saved. Right? And everybody has a choice. So with that, I want you to, you know, and I know you know about the blood. But even I was, as I was reading the scripture, we're in this new dispensation. We're in this new covenant. Like in Luke twenty two twenty, it says, after supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is a new covenant. This is, you know, when he was having communion. At pa- when, he had, when he met with his disciples, the, the last supper, that was Passover. All right? And it said, the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. He was having his last meal. It was the Passover meal. You know, when I started to learn about the Hebraic roots, I thought, oh, my God, I never paid attention to any of this stuff. And now I'm seeing it all over the Bible about our root system. All right? And so, um, anyway, it says here in, in, in Ephesians 2, and I'm going to close. It says in, in Ephesians 2.13, it says, But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. So when, you know, we would always sing, you know, all those songs about the blood of Jesus, and we need, to, we need to sing them again. But it's like, Lord, I know that I am cleansed. When we repent of our sin, I am cleansed by your blood. Lord, cleanse me. Purify my mind. Purify my conscience. Lord, forgive me. Let's say, you know, for whatever, like if there's sin or whatever, just forgive me for that. But purify me. See, the enemy doesn't have any hook in you. The only thing he has in you is lies. And it's up to us to say, no, 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 that's what the word says. Because, you know, in Romans 8, 1, it says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when the enemy's trying to condemn you, it's like, wait a minute, I repented over that. So, and I tell the devil, I said, listen, I got set free from guilt and condemnation. Don't even try it. It doesn't bother, you know, don't go there with me. But, but see, then when we start listening, it's like, no, have you repented? You repented. Then you need to tell that voice to shut up in Jesus' name. I am forgiven, I am redeemed, and I am covered by the blood. You see, and you keep getting strengthened in that. So I'm going to ask you to stand, and we're going to pray. And I want you to know, and for anyone who's watching online, if you've been struggling with condemnation or guilt, and even not forgiving yourself, now is the time to choose to forgive yourself. Now is the time to just say, you know what, Lord, I thank you that I am forgiven, like when we repent, and I am cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. And that because of the crucifixion, because of the brutality of what you endured, you are here, you're here with me, you're sprinkling your blood. And there's so many scriptures, I didn't even really touch it. There's just so, we can do like a six-week course in the blood. There's so much in the Word of God. And, and the authority that we have in that, what Jesus did for us. But just when there was a medical report that years ago, remember we read about the, the crucifixion and what Jesus really endured, the human body, what he went through. And I'm sure many of us have read that. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, and a lot of times, you know, when you're going through that heartache and pain, like I'll just go back to think, Lord, your death was not in vain. What you did for us, it was not in vain. We have freedom in you. And that, Lord, you're here to heal us. You're here to bring restoration. You're here to turn our lives around. I don't know how you're going to do it, right? Because sometimes when we're in that mess, we don't know how we're going to get out of that mess, right? But he knows how to get us out of the mess, right? So, Lord, we just thank you for the power of your blood. And every single one of us here, just like that picture you showed me of that crimson body of water, that, that we have this huge blanket over all of us. And we are covered. It's not until we come out and we're, we're in uh, agreement with Satan's lies of murmur and complain and pornography and lies and anger and fear and bitterness and judgment. That's what makes us a bullseye for the enemy. So, Lord, we just repent of any areas where our heart has been amiss, where our heart has just been misaligned. But, Lord, we come back into alignment with you. We yield our hearts to you because you love us. You love us. The spirit of truth resides within us. You love us. It's not to condemn us. It's to love us. And, Lord, we, we choose to come into agreement and alignment. For we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We're not a defeated people. We are, we are a conquering people. And so, Lord, we thank you 
because of the blood, we have been adopted into your kingdom. And we can cry out and call you Abba, Father. You're our heavenly Father, and you love us. And Jesus was sent to, to die on the cross for us, to free us from the grips of the enemy. And we have Holy Spirit within us, our paraclete, the one who, lead, who never leaves us, the one who's alongside of us, the one who comforts us, the one who's our advocate. You are here with us, oh God. And so, Lord, we just thank you for freedom. We thank you for the authority that we have. We thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus right now that you are sprinkling. You've been sprinkling your blood. It's life. It's eternal on each and every one of us. Our consciences are cleared, and we're healed by your blood. And we thank you for it, Lord. Lord, we honor your blood. We honor your, your redemption. We honor the blood of Jesus and what you've done for us, oh God. We, we just praise you and we worship you, Lord. Lord, we ask even for dreams and visions, Lord. We ask, oh God, that even in our time with you, our, in our dreams and in our personal time with you, would you give us deeper revelation, more revelation, just one drop of your blood, just one drop, oh God, sets things in order, turns things around. Hallelujah. We just thank you for your, your angelic host that's around us, oh God. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.